but my chickens have worms. See for yourself. Look closely, you can see it moving. All right, so that was pretty disgusting, right? Yeah, I thought the same thing. So that actually came from one of my Buff Orpington pullets. Uh, I believe it's a roundworm. And I was just sitting out here in the run like I do pretty regularly. And she happened to just walk right in front of me and poop. And I saw those little red bits. So that's actually what made me lean in for a closer look. And that's when I saw the worm in her poop. And I was like, ah! Then I pulled out my phone and uh, took a video of it so that I could share that. So I have actually been treating them um, for worms for a couple of days now, but I figured I'd go ahead and record a video to show you what, what I have been doing and what I've been using. There are a couple of products available to use to either treat an active infestation or to help prevent worm infestations. Number one, Ivermectin. So Ivermectin is available in an injectable form, which is just injected straight into the breast, or it's available in a pour-on form. Both are off-label for chickens, meaning they're not specifically made for chickens, but can be used for chickens. They do also require you to know the chicken's body weight, and then you'll have to calculate the appropriate dosage based on that. And I actually used the ivermectin pour-on from my flock back in the spring. The only thing with ivermectin though is that it does not kill tapeworms from what I understand. So if you have a tapeworm infestation, you are going to need to look for another product to use that will work against tapeworms. Additionally, there is an egg withdrawal period, and because ivermectin is not made specifically for chickens, it's kind of better to be safe than sorry. So what you may want to do is, is um, throw your eggs away for about 14 days. That's the general consensus that I had found based on the research I did. Now I'm just gonna throw this out there. Ivermectin is the same molecule, whether it's in dog medication, horse medication, cow medication, people medication. Ivermectin is ivermectin. Um, but I encourage you to do your own research and determine an egg withdrawal period, um, you know, that works best for you. But again, it is best to play it, play it safe. And, um, you know, what I found is, is 14 days. Now, if you're using the pour on, you're going to have to repeat that treatment in about seven to 10 days. So in addition to that, you're going to be throwing eggs away a little bit longer, um, because you're going to have to retreat your flock to make sure you got all cycles um, you know, of larva and adults and, and, you know, so forth. Another product that is available on the market is Safeguard. And Safeguard, a lot of folks have been using the Safeguard version for goats. And the active ingredient in there is fenbendazole. Now, fenbendazole, from what I read, will kill uh, or will treat tapeworms in addition to, you know, sequel worms, gape worms, round worms, etc. Um, so that's that's a good product to use. Additionally, if you're using the goat form, you are going to have an egg withdrawal period. And again, because it's off label for chickens, better safe than sorry, um, you probably want to be throwing eggs away for about 14 days. Um, so that was actually a product that I had planned to use in the fall anyway, because we didn't deworm our buff orpington pullets with the ivermectin because they were just too small at the time and we did not take care of archie so i was planning to use the the safeguard in the fall so that we could get archie as well and of course the buffies so if you don't already know i mentioned the safeguard um, for goats to use off label for chickens to deworm your flock so back in july or so i discovered this safeguard aquasol specifically for chickens yay so guess what? Guess what? No egg withdrawal. Who hates throwing eggs away? Y'all raise your hands, raise them high. <laughs> I know we all hate throwing eggs away, right? So I'm super excited about this product. So we have our Safeguard Aquasol for chickens that I'm actually currently using to treat the active roundworm infestation in my flock. This will treat roundworms. Um, so, and I'm actually just going to kind of walk through uh, the process for this and I'll show you how I've been mixing up the water as well. This stuff runs about $35 at Tractor Supply and it's not available in every single Tractor Supply store. Guys, I've got three, three Tractor Supplies within a 20 to 30 mile radius and a Rural King and not one of them had it. I had to go an hour and 20 minutes to a Tractor Supply to get this in store. 
The reason was because I didn't want to wait. I didn't want to wait to order it online and you know have it get here in a week. Um, I have an active infestation now. I need to treat it now. So that's what I did. It comes with a dosing syringe. It is very important that you use this dosing syringe when you're dosing your animals. The reason is because the whole entire syringe is one milliliter and it is very specific, very precise on the amount of medication that you're supposed to use. And then of course, here's your little vial of your, your goodies, yay! I am so excited about this product, you guys, no joke. So this is our insert, all right? Read this carefully. I read this thing several times because I did not want to screw this up. So it talks about the description, it talks about the indications, the dosage, the administration, safety precautions, warnings, how to get the medication up in the syringe, even has pictures. I'm just gonna kinda go through the directions on this really quickly. Um, so it requires you to estimate the total weight of the entire group of chickens to be treated. So you do have to have the estimated weight of your entire flock. And one three milliliter vial, so one, one vial of this, will treat a flock with a total body weight of 264 pounds um, for five consecutive days. Now, it says it should not be used for flocks with a combined body weight of 22 pounds or less because accurate dosing cannot be measured. So if you've got super small chickens and you only have two or three of them, you're not gonna be able to use this. Who has two or three chickens, right? Because chicken now. Anyway, so, <laughs> so you come to step two and you consult the table to determine the volume of water to be used. And for my flock, 56 to 110 pounds, we figure mine are about 90 pounds in total combined weight. Um, they only get eight cups of water with the medication in it. Now, when I first read this, I was like, eight cups of water, that's all they get? Yeah, girl, medicated water, medicated water, okay? just saying. <laughs> so then I come down here to step three and that's what this big huge long table is on on the front okay so um for my flock 89 to 99 pounds it's 0.225 milliliters of medication and this dosing syringe is very 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 precise and I'll show you that when I mix it up. A couple of things I want to mention really quickly um you need to make sure that you take up all their waterers only give them the medicated water until it's consumed in full. It is here in the instructions. Additionally, it says to provide this medicated water to your, to your birds first thing in the morning when water is at its peak consumption. First thing they do when they come off that roost, they want food, they want water. So I have been meeting them out here. My flock comes out about 6.45 or so, and I can and I've been getting it out here between 6.40 and 6.50. So um, before they come out here or, or right, you know, within a few minutes. It does say in the instructions, if you have more than one waterer to distribute the total volume of medicated water in equal parts, splitting up eight cups of water is a little bit unrealistic. So I have one open water drinker that I just put the full medicated water in and that's all I give them. They all drink out of it with no problem. They take turns, they're good. And then my flock consumes it by about 2, 2.30 in the afternoon. So once it's fully consumed, then I just bring out a regular old nipple water drinker for them and they just have plain water for the rest of the day. And then at night, I pick that up for them. Also, I do not let them out to free range um, because I don't want them to have access to other water. Chickens tend to naturally go for water sources that are easier to drink out of. So if you have an open water, I would recommend using that over a nipple drinker or, or anything else. Not everybody, I understand, has the ability to sit and watch their flocks uh, water consumption throughout the day. We work, right? We go to school, right? It, you know, we have other things we have to do. So it is gonna require you to get a little creative. Um, you know, if you're, if you're somebody who can't be here to, hey, they're out of their medicated water, now I've got to give them some regular water. You don't want them to not have any water at all. So if it was me, what I would do is I would take my open water drinker and I would put the medication in that first and then I would just bring them out one of their smaller nipple drinkers. I have a two gallon nipple drinker that I would just kind of set further away. 
Chickens, again, will naturally go to whatever is easiest to drink out of. That's just how they roll. So chances are they're going to consume that medicated water over the regular water just because of the drinker that it's in. So again, you might have to get a little creative. If you've got a flock that free ranges, you may have to confine them um, during the treatment period if you can and then maybe let them out later. Or um, you know, if you don't have a way to confine your free range flock, completely understandable, some people don't. Maybe put that medicated water drinker like right outside their door when they come out in the morning. So that's maybe the first thing that they go to. It's just gonna require a little bit of creative thinking if you're, if you're using this for treatment. Okay, so let me show you how I mix this stuff up. Here's our safeguard for chickens. Syringe directions, of course. What you want to do is just kind of agitate the solution for about 10 seconds. I always keep a paper towel nearby. Now my dosing is, this is a whole milliliter. So you've got 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and so on. And I really hope you can see that. Anyway, what I'm going for is 0 0.225, which is one line past the 0.2. You got 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and then 0 0.75. So quarter, half, three quarter is how I look at it. Okay. You want to completely invert the bottle. And make sure you don't get any air in it. If you do, just kind of tap on it or push some of the liquid back in the bottle and try again. I'm going really slow here, but okay, I'm at 0.2 and 0.25. There we go. And then you just drop it in the water. Rinse this out. Now you wanna give this a stir till the water is kind of like a milky. It looks kind of milky. That's it, serve it to your chickens. Taking it out to everybody, everybody's out. I'm a little bit late this morning because I was making up this water. They're looking for water. Good morning, everyone. And I have all their other waterers taken up. I just have this one. There we go. Just make sure they drink it. They've been out about 15 minutes already. I am a little bit late because I was filming this video. So I want to make sure everybody gets a little water. It's especially important that I see Archie drink because as I mentioned earlier, he was not dewormed earlier this year when we used the ivermectin pour on because we cannot catch him. So... If I ever do have to catch him for a specific reason, I'm gonna have to use a net, but I do not wanna terrorize him because he is a good boy and he has manners. All right, so that is going to do it for deworming our flock with the Safeguard Aquasol for chickens. And if you like what you see, um, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Definitely check out some of our other videos as well. We have some exciting things that are forthcoming. We're going to be adding some baby ducks in a couple of weeks. Very excited about that. And we're also going to be building a larger chicken coop so that we can expand our current flock of chickens. And then this existing coop and run that you see behind me will eventually be converted into the permanent duck hut. So I will be posting a lot of content as we kind of go through that. I really hope that you can join me for all of that. And in the meantime, thank you so much for joining me today on Kings on the Hill. And I really hope to catch you on the next one.